Hi, I'm Nicholas Whitkoff. I'm a student at LMU, and something interesting about me is I've always really loved to go sailing. I will be presenting two monologues today. First, from a play called Carl, aka Carl, by DTR Sierra, and my second monologue uh, from Two Gentlemen of Verona by William Shakespeare. It's, it's more than how you dress, Carl. And it's not just your detached demeanor or your pathological tranquility or the mysteriously meaningless ways you spend your time. You never went to college. You never had a job. You live in a tiny universe that keeps you buffered from reality and you have no responsibilities in this blissful little non-reality that, well, that isn't healthy. Let me put it more simply, Carl. You're a loser. You're an embarrassment to me. You're an embarrassment to mom. You've always been embarrassment. No one understands you. Okay, dad did. He understood you. But that's because he was a lot like you. He was a loser too. You're in my way, Carl. Financially and socially. And that's because there's something wrong with you. You're not normal. And it's deep. Whatever's wrong with you, it's very deep. Sometimes I see you in a functional, practical human being, but then that mystical, zen-like circus clown shows up. I... I want you to see someone. If I leave my Julia, I break my vow and prove it a lie. If I love the beautiful Sylvia, I break my vow. If I wrong my friend Valentine, I'll very much break my vow. And even that love that made me first declare my devotion now provokes me to break my vow three times over. Love made me swear an oath, and love bids me to break it. Sweet, seductive love, if you've sinned, teach me, your tempted servant, how to pardon that sin. At first I adored a twinkling star, but now I worship a heavenly sun. Vows made carelessly can be broken with careful thought. And the man that doesn't have the will to train his mind to trade something bad for something better lacks intelligence. But shame, shame! What disrespectful tongue I have to call Julia bad when my tongue has often praised her superiority with 20,000 devote oaths of love. I cannot stop loving her, and yet I do. But in ceasing to love her, I go to love the woman I should love. I lose Julia and I lose Valentine. If I keep them, then I'll lose myself. If I lose them, then I'll gain myself instead of Valentine and Sylvia instead of Julia. I cherish myself more than I cherish any friend. The love of oneself is always most precious. And Sylvia, with heaven, which made her white and beautiful, as witness makes Julia look like a dark-skinned Ethiopian. I will forget that Julia is alive, and remember my love for her is gone. I'll consider Valentine an enemy, and focus on Sylvia as a more important friend. I cannot now keep the promise to myself without acting treacherously toward Valentine. <laughs> Tonight he plans to climb a rope ladder to the heavenly Sylvia's bedroom window with me as his partner. Now I'll go and immediately inform her father. He'll be enraged and will banish Valentine because he intends for Thurio to marry his daughter. <laughs> with stupid Valentine gone, I'll ruin stupid Thurio's plan with some sly trick. <laughs> Love, lend me wings so I may accomplish my aims quickly, as you've lent me cleverness to plot this scheme. Thank you.